the Toughbook CF31 and the Dell Ruggedized Latitude. What are some differences? One is that I guess was noticeable for me is on the side here where the covers are, there are USB ports on the back and those um, The USB ports are big enough. Put it right there. There you go. Oh, uh, there you go. So, if you're using a dongle, like for a, um, you know, any of that Logitech stuff, mouse, keyboard, that kind of thing. Um, Mine was for a mouse. What was nice is on the CF31, there's enough space there that that dongle can be there and the cover can close. And that's just not the case with the type of cover on the Dell Latitude. Next, uh, similarity to some aspect is both the hard drives are removable. One big difference with the CF31 is, so let me refresh that. So they both have a removable hard drive that's easy to get. They both have it on a drawer here, on a door, excuse me. The big difference is, is on this door, for the Dell, you basically pop this open, there's a little latch you have to push, and then the hard drive comes out. So you'll notice, um, and I'll do that in just a second, and then on this one, you have to open the lid, then move a lock, and then lift up, and then open it, and then it slides out. So that's a, a pretty substantial difference. Let me do that up close so you can see. This is the Dell. And as you notice here, there is a little latch, so it opens. There's this little blue tab right here. And then you press it to the side. You pull the little tab and your hard drive comes out. So for right now, I'm gonna leave this hard drive out just to show a pretty substantial difference. So you have your tough book. This is your, your locking mechanism. And even if you unlock it, this latch will not come up. So you have to physically open the lid, the screen. Then you have to, there you go. Then you have to press this to the side. Oh, sorry, I locked it. Press to the side, then lift up on this, and then pull it open. And again, you notice the screen has to be open and the hard drive slides out. So, let's look at the difference in this. So, these are your differences. You can clearly see that something's different, but what is it? So, um, this is a, a typical drive. And then in here, is also a typical drive. But if you notice, there is a lot of cushion around this thing. And there's also this heat, copper, that's around it so it'll warm up the drive. This is gonna be using super cold temperatures. Um, and then this is in a little, you know, in and out piece. And um, it's just something to think about, you know. So that, I believe, I think this one is the SSD that I have. Um, but you can obviously see that's the difference. So um, semi-rugged, fully rugged. And that's, that's a big difference. So let me show you going back in. So you, so you open the lid and then safety latch, another latch, open, and then it just slides in. Um, they both slide in and out very easy. Then you close, maybe, there you go, and then latch. And then you close here. And then putting this one back in, again, very simple, but this one you can have the screen uh, closed. So you do the latch, slide it in and if you notice on here too there's a little divot 
and so that's to kind of guide it in. Clicks in place with your little blue thing there and you close it. Do you have a much higher drop test with this one than you do with this one? This is still a drop test. I think it's, uh, I think it's three feet on a, on a corner or on flat. This one thing is six feet. Um, both are dust resistant, like dust storm resistant. Both are uh, rain resistant and both are high pressure spray resistant. I think this one uh, gives you the like heavy rain rating, so you, the um, like more consistent water outside kind of thing. What are some similarities? So some similarities between these two are um, they both have touch screens. That comes standard, I think. Um, they both have styluses. They're stored a little different, so this stylus is stored in the handle. And this stylus has a little, um, I don't know if that's gonna show up, a little stylus icon. So you open the door, and then inside, I'm trying to see the screen too, um, the little stylus comes out. So. Um, they both have a stylus, they're just stored a little different. Another uh, similarity between the two is they both have the option for GPS and cellular. So on here, the Toughbook um, has a pretty beefy antenna. So if you, that, that chunk right there, sitting up there, that's the GPS antenna. And this is an older one, but um, it has a uh, cell phone, old school pull-up antenna. But the new one you can get um, has you know LTE on it. This one's just old. Um, but same thing with this. So the difference with this one is that it can have internal uh, GPS and cellular. So they both can have standalone, don't need a you know hotspot or a cell phone hotspot. They both support docking stations. So this one has the Dell, you know, little thing on the bottom. And then this one has a little tray. So there's like a, a little drawer that kind of slides out right here. And inside of it, you can see the little little thing for the dock, docking station. And now I'd like to talk about why a ruggedized laptop, either semi or fully, and which one of these is the best. Both of these have their pros and cons. Um, I've had this one for, for a few months now. I've had this one for years and years and years. And uh, they both definitely have their pros and cons. So one question you might be asking is, why on earth would I need a ruggedized laptop? I'm uh, not working in, uh, you know, harsh environments. I'm not working in a desert. I'm not working in the ocean with ocean spray. I'm not working in one of those high heat or super cold environments. About a year ago, I did a video on why I chose one. So I'll reiterate um, the main points of that video. I think it is very important to have a full digital backup of all of your critical stuff. So whether that's uh, you know marriage licenses, birth certificates, titles, deeds, medical records, um, you know contracts, or whatever it might be that's important to you, so that if you know your house burns down or everything else fails, or you know there's a, a true global disaster and you have to be more mobile, then this gives you that option to store everything in one spot that is either rugged or semi-rugged, but it's, you know, it's, it's water resistant, dust resistant, shock resistant, drop resistant, um, and it's all self-contained. You know, you don't need to, I don't need to connect these to the internet to be able to get my information. So say there's, you know, like another Katrina or something like that, and you can't get out, this has everything that you need on it. It's gonna have all of your critical information to take to, you know, insurance or FEMA or whatever it might be, and say, here are my credit cards, driver's license, passports, everything and all the serial numbers and values of all the stuff for insurance 
all in this one spot that I can take and email or do whatever I need to do. The other reason I like these options for your kind of backup plan of all your personal information on top of say just a hard drive, this gives you a way to access that information, not just have a hard drive. And this also gives me the ability, so if we really are dealing with like, you know, worst case scenario, like, a, um, I don't know, like the Greenland movie, like a, a you know, an asteroid hit or, you know, Hurricane Sandy or Katrina or, or a major earthquake, I can open it up and see stuff. And say we get separated, I can open this up and I keep very recent pictures of everyone in our family with just kind of like profile pictures. And that way, if we do have to do one of those walls to find people or give facial recognition to like say FEMA or something for missing people, we can just give them that on a little thumb drive and it's all right there. But then how do you get it there? So that's the other reason I like these is that I can take this and you know, obviously keep it charged on a regular basis, but I can take it and just toss it in my backpack, you know, that we're gonna have some extra clothes and food and medicine, whatever that might be. And whether you're gonna call that your bug out bag or your evacuation kit, your hurricane kit, whatever it is, but everything that can fit on your, excuse me, on your person, so you can have everything in one bag, so you don't have to try and set something down and carry a bunch of stuff. Your hands are free. Remember, always wanna have hands free and everything's in this backpack. So then that kind of comes down to, well, which one is the best? This one is going to survive, you know, a zombie apocalypse without question. This one would probably work also. This one is super, super heavy. This one is way lighter and way thinner. Um, you know, it just depends what you want. Uh, at one point when I was, you know, single and, and young and stuff, this one was great. I could put this in a Maxpedition bag with some food and clothes, and I knew if I ever had to go anywhere in an emergency, everything was there and I didn't care about the weight. Well, now, um, you know, family and all that stuff later, this is a better option to me for several, several reasons. Um, it is thinner and lighter. I am I have a high certainty that, um, so when I got this one, I was assuming, you know, the uh, Mad Max kind of world where I put it in a bag, I'd be living in a hammock and you know, all that kind of stuff in the woods by myself. And I needed something that was, um, water resist, like super water resistant, you know, dust resistant, shock resistant, all that kind of stuff. That's what this is. Now, that's not so much my view on con of concern right now. Um, you know, I'm, I have a, a higher degree of certainty that we could get to a hotel if we needed to. If we really did have a situation where we're having to sleep in the car, that's an option. Or, you know, worst case scenario, having to walk because of a, you know, whatever the situation might be. But we're gonna be together and we're gonna either make a shelter or get into a shelter, even though that's kind of, you know, super worst case scenario. But then that gives me this option where I'm not gonna open this. Um, in a pouring down rainstorm in the forest. You know, I'm gonna open this when I'm sitting at a desk with, um, you know, insurance or FEMA, or whatever it might be. So it's one of those stage of life questions. Um, I still recommend, recommend this all day long, the CF31. They have new versions, new faster processors. This one's just old. Um, but this thing is bomb proof. It's super rock solid. Um, it's just heavy. So, you know, just kind of goes to what you want. This one is just, you know, newer, faster, thinner, lighter, but this is not comparable to this in durability. So if, if your plan is that you need to have something super rugged because you're gonna to toss it in a, in a trailer or horseback or whatever it might be, dirt bike, something like that, then yeah, I'd totally recommend this. Something to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of stuff is um, you need to keep them up to date. So what I recommend is keeping your primary backup, whatever that might be, wherever you keep it, you know, in a safe, whatever that is. And then every six months, taking these laptops, charging them up, going, going through updates, you know, on, on just computer stuff. 
and then taking that backup drive or whatever it is you use, seeking it to this, run a virus check on, on the laptop again, run a virus check on the thumb drive or hard drive, whatever you do again, um, then copy everything over and then keep it on here and just that way you kind of have your record kept up because you know, once you kind of get in the rhythm, you're not getting, you know, dentist visits or hospital x-rays or anything like that every week. You might do it like once or twice a year. The last two things to kind of go over with these is security. If you are going to make the choice to get one of these and put it on your, uh, put all your information on it, like all your critical stuff so you can start your life over again from a, you know, insurance identification standpoint, you need to make sure that these are through cyber and physical both very secure. On the cyber side, you want to have some kind of really strong uh, malware, antivirus, ransomware, all the things um, program. I love Bitdefender. That's what we use on everything we have. They have been really, really good. I have had Bitdefender for a very long time and they, I just like them. The interface is good, it's affordable, and they do everything that we want them to do, want it to do. Um, the other thing you need to think of is encrypting your information. So, you know, layers of onion again, you always need to think about security like onion. All security is is time. And, you know, so um, say you're in a situation where you, to, where you have to have this and someone takes it. So your your time is the normal you know password, whether you do Mac or Windows, that um, you get on here and then you have your password to get in. So then you should have another layer of some kind of extra program that then is another encryption layer to encrypt the your folder or your items that you have. And then in addition to that, I recommend hiding those files. So you can set it so until that password is entered, they, they are not visible when you look through the computer if they are able to get through. Um, and then, you know, so that's on your cyber side. Then your physical side, you don't want someone to get this, I guess, you know, first of all, to get to that cyber level. Um, but you want to make sure since all this, all that information is on here, you want to keep this thing locked up super tight. I mean, this is more valuable than cash or jewelry because if someone gets one of these or say your hard drive that you're using, if someone gets it, they have your life and your whole family's life. So whether you, however you keep your stuff safe, whatever that might be, make sure it is as secure physically as possible. That someone doesn't have to, have to really want to get it to get access to it. I mean, they'd have to go through, you know, all kinds of, of headache to try and get to this thing. Um, and then, you know, your other benefit too is you wanna be able to just kind of blend in. That whole gray man mentality, say you can't have a safe, you can find some way to blend stuff in easily, and that's what this can do. You can blend this in, you know, to bookshelves or beds or closets or all that kind of stuff that maybe you can't lock it up in a safe, but you can secure it with like a, um, you know, pack safe, mesh thing, all that kind of stuff. So just remember, whichever route you go, if you go this route or with any kind of thing you have, it needs to be, uh, password protected, it needs to be encrypted separately with a second layer of encryption and possibly hidden. And then physically, you need to physically secure your stuff because this, this is everything for you and you need to remember that. So when you have these out, you need to treat these like they are, you know, I don't even know, something very valuable that can't leave your site. And then when you are done using it, after you, you want to make sure you have positive control, it's a good term, over these things the whole time they're out of your secure location. When they go back in, you lock them up, put them away, disguise them, whatever it is you do, and that way they are always as secure as possible.